Thank you and good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to today's media teleconference, introducing Joseph Newgarden as Team Penske's newest Verizon IndyCar Series driver. Along with Joseph, we also have Team Penske President Tim Sindrick joining us today. Earlier this morning, we announced that Joseph would be joining Team Penske as the driver of the number two Penske Delara Chevrolet beginning in 2017. This obviously comes on the heels of one of our most successful seasons ever in IndyCar, where we earned 10 wins, 11 poles, our 14th IndyCar championship with Simon Pagano, and a 1-2-3 sweep in the point standings, something we had not done since 1994. Momentarily, we will open the floor for questions from the media, but would first like to get a couple of opening comments from both of our participants. Joseph, you've been able to spend some time in the shop this morning. What are your impressions of Team Penske so far? Well, it's been a whirlwind for me. Uh, you know, it's all happened a bit fast, uh, which is which is great. You know, it's 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 just like racing. Everything everything goes quickly. Um, so for me, it's it's been uh, a pleasure to try and meet meet a lot of the guys this morning within Penske Racing. Um, you know, trying to absorb as much as I can. It's almost information over for a guy like me. So um, really excited to be you know here and, and hopefully add some more value to the group, um, which is is going to be hard to do. They've got a lot of amazing people here, you know, whether it's the managers, the ownership, sponsors, uh, all the crewmen, the, the, the drivers, it's, it's, it's really a lot to get your head around. So I think for me, I'm just trying to absorb as much as possible and taking the experience and, and, and be prepared for the, the long off season that we're going to have before we get to St. Pete next year. Great. And Tim, can you tell us why Joseph is such a good fit to join Team Penske and drive the number two in the Verizon IndyCar Series? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, there's, uh, uh, from a historical perspective, you look at it and it's, you know, he's the first American that we've had, you know, driving an Indy car here since, uh, since Sam Hornish. So it's been 10 years since, uh, that's not the reason we hired him. Obviously, we, we look for the guys that, uh, you know, can drive the car and, and that's what we've always looked at. But it's, it's a bonus for sure. And the, the fact that, um, you know, as we look at it, we, we wanted somebody that could, we could build on for the future. And it's, you know, it's, it's no secret that uh, that you know he's he's uh, bringing the average age of our drivers down a little bit. So I, I think we, he's somebody that we can build with, and and I guess the most important thing is he's shown that he can be successful at this level. Uh, he's somebody that we met with when he was the IndyCar Lights champion. You know, I remember meeting with he and Rick Gorn and and uh, Roger after he'd won the Lights championship, and he's somebody that we've kept our eye on from that point in time, and. Uh, it's you know no different than when we signed Simon. You, you kind of have to you have to decide if you're going to make a place for somebody like that or if you're going to you know race against them for a while. So we we figured he was better off being on our side than on the other side. Great, thanks guys. All right, now we'd like to uh, turn the floor uh, over back to the moderator and uh, start taking questions from the assembled media. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for questions. If you do have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad at this time. If you're using a speakerphone, we ask somebody posing your question. You just pick up your handset to provide favorable sound quality. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question or comment, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad at this time. And our first question comes from Mandy Winslow from Podium Finish. Please state your question. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Great. All right. So for you, Mr. Newgarden, you are coming off an amazing season given what transpired in June at Texas. How does it feel to be driving for Penske now? Well, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, I think for me as a, you know, still a, hopefully a relatively young guy in the sport, um, it's an amazing opportunity. You know, it's something that I think you, you really have to take a hard look at and, uh, make a decision on, and, and for me, it was it was it was difficult to, you know, look the other way at it. I think um, it's it's a great place where I can you know learn new experiences, try and grow as a driver, and um, you know, it's kind of kind of open up my whole uh, my whole role within the group and try and just become better um, within the sport. So, it, it, I mean, just to put it simply, it, it feels amazing. It's a, it's an amazing honor. Um, you know, just. For, for me, I just want to be able to integrate into the team and, and be a part of uh, the whole system that, that, you know, obviously works really well together already. Had a very successful year in IndyCar, and they're very hard to compete against. So um, it's, it's fun for me to, to be a part of that now and, and hopefully add some value to the whole group. 
All right, thank you. And for you, Tim, with Joseph taking over Juan Pablo Montoya's seat, is it pretty much safe to say that uh, JPM is leaving the team after this year? Well, it's, it's something that uh, we're still working through. Um, you know, when we, we sat down with, with Juan around Toronto and it, it told him, you know, at that point in time that we were prepared to, uh, to really make any decisions on what we were going to do going forward until the end of the season. And we wanted to understand really what our options were, and, and we were very upfront with him about that whole situation. And all along we said that we'd like him to be part of our team in the future. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean driving our, our two-car full-time. And we've talked to him about, uh, you know, we, we've got a seat for him at Indy if he wants one. And if we do a car program, we'd like him to be involved in it. So, um, you know, he, at that point in time, he said, look, I, I really want to drive a, at least another season in IndyCar. I, I don't want this to be my, my last season. Um, you know, if it was last year, it would be a little easier to take. But, but this year, I, I feel like I still have some unfinished business. Um, and we, we agreed to just explore different options at that point, at which time, it, which is, you know, really what he's trying to do right now is, is find out if, if there's a full season ride available. And, uh, you know, we said that, you know, our offer is open to him and we'd love for him to, to continue with our team. It was just something that we needed to decide whether we were going to, you know, position ourselves to, to do that for another year and, and, uh, miss the opportunity to, to have Joseph as part of our team for the future. So a really difficult decision for us because Juan's really been a big part of our success. Um, you know, despite where he finished this year, he pushed our guys very hard. Um, he's been a great guy to work with, and we continue to love working with him in the future. So really the, the ball's in his court as far as, um, you know, whether it's not, it's not the for him, uh, but we'd like to continue some association with him if it makes sense for him. All right, thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations on the new deal. Thank you. Thank you, and our next question comes from Bruce Martin from Auto Sport Magazine. Please state your question. Uh, congratulations, Joseph. Um, when you were at Ed Carpenter Racing, that was always known as the little team that could. Now you're at the big superpower team that always does. And the resources that you have at Team Penske uh, when you go around their shop and all that, now that that's going to be at your disposal, what goes through your mind? Well, you know, I think pressure is always, you know, it's, it's a present uh, wherever you're at. I mean, I, I, always, I always put pressure on myself uh, with any situation I was in uh, driving an Indy car. I think, you know, we had high expectations at ECR, um, and rightfully so. I thought we thought we had, you know, a lot of talented people there. We had a really great process and, um, you know, great ownership, great partners, really, really had a lot of tools to be successful. So, you know, with that, I think there was a, there was a lot of pressure there to, to, to do a good job um, for everyone involved, our partners, our, our ownership. So I, I don't foresee that shifting too much. I think you're going to have that sense of responsibility anywhere you race. Um, but it, it certainly is. It's hard to not be um, – you know, inspired, I guess, or, or overwhelmed when you walk into uh, the Penske establishment. It's, uh, it's filled with a lot of great people as well, a lot of great partners, um, tremendous support from the ownership. So uh, I think that same type of pressure that I felt at ECR is, is really going to actually translate probably pretty well to, to what I feel here as well. And also, two of your teammates live in the area, live in North Carolina. Uh, Elio lives down in Miami. Will you be relocating? to uh, North Carolina? You know, I, w I would think so. Um, I I'd like to be close to the team and to be able to absorb as much as I can over the offseason. I think that's really important. You really got to integrate yourself well um, and, and give yourself the best shot that, to help the group, uh, you know, especially for me going into 2017. So I haven't really had much time to, to go over that stuff. You know, this, is, this has been a pretty fast process, and we're trying to just – um, you know, hit the ground running real quick now and today, and, and I'm absorbing everything I can as fast as I can here at the shop, and, you know, I'll try and sort out a, a living situation later on, but I, I would think at some point, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to locate down here so I can be close to the team 100%. Okay, congratulations, and remember what I told you Tuesday night about there is a difference between North Carolina barbecue and Tennessee. You got it, thanks. Thank you. And our next question comes from Tony DeZino from NBC Sports. Please state your question. 
Uh, Joseph and Tim, first off, congratulations to you both. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. And then, Joseph, for you, when I look at it from the teammate situation, you know, it's been a rotating door. You either haven't had a teammate, you've had one-off teammates, you've had sometimes road course, sometimes oval teammates. How nice is it going to be having a consistent, not just one teammate, but, you know, three of the, the best drivers on the grid as your teammates? Yeah, I think it'll be great. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a it's going to be a different challenge for me. You know, I think from a, an establishment standpoint, you got you got more guys to work with. You know, that brings more engineers to to talk to. Um, it changes the discussion. You know, the whole dynamic that you go through on a race weekend. So, I, I'm excited for that. It's going to be a shift for me, something I'm I've not been used to. Um, but you know, I don't want to discount you know what I've been up against in the past. You know, a lot of help from. Uh, my previous owner, Ed Carpenter, I mean, he was a great teammate to me, very strong in the ovals, uh, J.R. Hildebrand, uh, Spencer Piggott, Luca Filippi. Um, you know, there's been, there's been a lot of camaraderie there in the past for me, and I've, I've had a, a lot of great guys to work with and bounce things off of. So uh, I think I'm just going to – what's really going to change is that there's going to be more of that. You know, there's going to be more available here at this group, um, which I think you can see, you know, why they operate at such a high level when you get that many talented people together. Uh, it, it really helps elevate the whole program, and you push each other a lot more. So um, it's going to be different. I, I don't know what that's going to be like. I'm excited for it. I hope it, it pushes me to a new level. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to figure some things out about myself I didn't know, and uh, hopefully those are those are those are good things. And if they're bad things, I'll try and fix them pretty quick. But uh, I, I think it's going to be a great change. And Tim, one quick question for you: When would you expect to see Joseph make his uh, first test in the car? Uh, Monday morning in Elkhart Lake. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll be taking all four guys to, to Road America on on Monday, um, so he'll, he'll get a chance. It's really a unique opportunity because a lot of times when we make a change like this, it's a while before they get in the car. But um, we had scheduled a, a test independent of whether we made a driver change or not. Um, so that's not really the catalyst. The catalyst for us is to, to get some permanent road course uh, testing in before the winter months because we, we feel like it's something that we, we need to understand a bit better before we go into the off season. So the timing was, was good for him. And um, he'll, he'll also be doing a, a test at Gateway later that week as well. So uh, he's going to get some seat time right off the bat and you know be able to kind of get in the trenches with our guys and get acclimated very quickly so that uh, in the off season we can, I guess, speak from experience. Uh, congrats again, and thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Once again, that's Star One. If you do have a question, and our next question comes from Michael Bredenel from Detroit Free Press. Please state your question. Well, that's Michael Brudenel from the Detroit Free Press. But anyway, um, congratulations, uh, Joseph, and uh, you're a Detroit guy now. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, it's the Motor City. <laughs> We're going to claim you anyway. Um, Tell me um, the, the, the makeup of the team. Uh, you've got an Aussie, you've got a Brazilian, and a Frenchman. Um, uh, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, merge with these guys. I mean, it's got a lot of competition up here um, with uh, Team Penske. How do you think uh, the synergy will be? Uh, and how tough was it to tell Ed uh, that you were leaving, and uh, and how did he take it? Um, well, you know, I think uh, to take your first question, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've not, um, I've not had this type of dynamic uh, with uh, personalities before, like we're going to have. But you know, I think there's, you can definitely see there's a, there's a strong worth ethic um, and a strong sense of, of uh, teamwork here with, within Team Penske. So I, I, I think the, the the challenge aspect of having you know three other really talented drivers around me is only going to be a positive thing you know there's there's guys from all all over the world um that bring a little something to the table and and you know i'm going to try and do the same i'll, I'll try and bring a little something extra maybe these guys haven't seen before which helps the whole program and in return i you know I, i'm expecting to get a lot of that from those guys so uh i'm excited for that mix i don't know what it looks like don't know what it feels like yet um like Tim said, we're gonna we're gonna have an opportunity to to do that really quickly, which is unique. Um, it just kind of worked out, great timing. So uh, excited to see what that brings. And then on the uh, on the Ed side, you know, it was very difficult. I mean, it was really difficult at first. It, it was almost easy up until the end of the, the season because you know I didn't really put much time into it. We we really just focused on trying to win ship, get back in the the hunt after the whole Texas deal. 
Um, we had a we had a great effort going all year with ECR, and so I didn't really spend much time thinking about it. And you know, I waited to, to spend a week and, and take some time after the season finale to to really assess everything. And you know, I came to a conclusion of of you know where where I wanted to go and where I I, I saw things and where where they probably needed to head. And and when I had a conversation and made the decision with Ed, um, it was difficult. I mean, it was it was a great partnership. Great, great environment for me, and you know, to do something different is never easy. But I think at this point, it's um, it can be a it can be a very positive thing for the growth of my career, and I think you know, ECR is going to come out great from it as well. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. And our next question comes from John Oriovich from ESPN. Please state your question. Hi, everybody. Uh, let me add my congratulations. Just like you know, kind of. Kind of jokingly, in the uh, in the spirit of the political season, I wonder if you could offer an endorsement for who you who Ed might uh, replace you with there at ECR. You've worked with Spencer and Jr. and uh, there's some interesting candidates out there for sure. <laughs> you know, fortunately, I'm not I'm not in the position where I have to decide those things. Um, so, uh, you know, luckily that's that's down to, to different people. You know, they, like I said, Ed, Ed's got a great group. Um, you know, with the ownership they have over there, so I'm sure they're going to make a great choice. They got a great team, so I, I expect to be, you know, chasing hard to beat them. I, I know they like on that side, and they 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 have a really good product. So I don't think it's going to be easy coming to the other side trying to beat them now. Um, so I have no idea. I hope they, you know, they they make the the best choice, and I'm sure they will. And we'll see see where they land. Great, thanks, guys. Good luck. Once again, Star One, if you do have a question. And our next question comes from Brant James from USA Today. Please state your question. Hi, everybody. Thanks for your time. Hey, Brent. Hey. Uh, first, for Joseph, uh, you mentioned that this came together uh, rather quickly, um, but, but you also knew that you know the Penske organization had, had sort of been watching you for a few years there. What's that dynamic like, and... And when did you kind of get the sense that, um, you know, if the, if the numbers and the contract stuff could be worked out, that this was going to be the place that you wanted to be? Well, you know, I don't think I did. I think it was uh, for – fortunately, it was a short period of time. But there was a short period of time where I was in limbo. You know, I actually didn't have a job. Um, so, you know, you hope it's going to work out. Um, but like I said, I didn't, I didn't have much time to think about it during the season because we had such a great effort going – we all really wanted to focus on trying to win the championship, which was the most important thing. And then, you know, when I when I finally did did start to think about it after Sonoma, um, you know, really aggressively, I, I I knew there would be other opportunities. I knew there'd be other interests, and I knew I wanted to try something different. I knew that was something that that I was looking at heavily. Um, you know, and then I think at that point you try and you try and go in a different direction, hope it all works out. And fortunately, this time it it, it did. And for Tim, um, Joseph seems a bit against the grain for some of your recent hires in that he, he was a li- he's a little younger than Simon and Will and, you know, didn't bring two championships like, like Sam did. I mean, what, what made him the guy, even back when you spoke to him several years ago, that you thought he was going to be a guy that you had to have eventually in your lineup? Well, he's shown that he's a winner. He's shown that he can handle himself on the racetrack and off the racetrack. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really the core ingredient for us is somebody that, uh, you know, can work in our environment because our environment's not for everybody. Um, but at the same time, you know, as Roger's always said, it's, it's hard to run a driving school, you know, with the expectations that are here. Um, and we need to also have somebody that we feel like can work within our, our group, you know, our teammates and that type of thing. And when you, when you look at, who we've hired over the years, that's been a, an important part of our structure, although it's, it's not the number one requirement. We want people who can drive race cars and, and represent, you know, our, our organization and those that we represent in the right way. And felt like he fit that mold. You know, obviously, he, he's got a longer runway in terms of age than, you know, maybe some of the hires have or, or what have you, but um, that, that's really not the motivator either. It's, it's more about how do, how do we build the strongest team we have you know, for the upcoming years, and um, you know, we, we felt like there, as I said, there's there's never a good time to make a change, especially when you've had success with the guys we've had, and you know, uh, replacing Juan Montoya with anybody is a uh, that's a difficult decision. 
it's just a difficult call and you know i'm sure if, if he doesn't end up racing for us in the future he'll still be winning races and he'll still be one of the guys to beat so you know he, he's not he's not done for sure so uh it's just a matter of, of trying for us to understand what's best for us and you know short term and long term i guess that'll all play out but uh you know this is where we are okay good thank you both Thank you. Thank you. And our next question comes from David Malsher from Motorsport. Please state your question. Hi, guys. Congratulations. Um, I wanted to uh, ask Tim if you have identified a uh, potential uh, long-term partner or whether we can expect a uh, uh, sponsorship partner or whether we can expect to see the number two in the kind of like variety that we've seen. Uh, the last year, like PPG, Hawk, Verizon, and uh, Devilbus. Yeah, I would say there'd be a few exceptions to that. You know, additions or subtractions, may, possibly. And you know, our 2017, you know, our, our total lineup for every race isn't totally defined. Um, you know, we needed to get this piece of the puzzle out there first. But uh, I don't see it being dramatically different, David. Right. And my follow-up question is: Do you think that Joseph? Uh, personality and obviously now uh, you know, reputation for sheer speed, do you think that that will uh, help uh, attract more, uh, you know, a long-term partner? We've got a lot of personalities around here, as you know. So, yeah. So I, I think, I think uh, you know, it'll, it'll bring a different dynamic for sure. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly see it as a, as a positive going forward. So I, I think it, it helps. It helps the potential, you know, it, I don't think it uh, it hurts the potential in any way. Okay, thank you. Uh, my other question is for Joseph. Um, again, congrats. But uh, I wanted to ask whether you feel like uh, there's, uh, as someone referred to earlier, you know, you're the American and you're suddenly in a very prominent position, uh, whether you feel uh, kind of like almost a patriotic sense of... Uh, uh, you know, pride, uh, not just pride, but actual, you know, dependency, like the, the future of IndyCar is kind of like uh, depending on you. So, so many people say that that's the magic bullet, that IndyCar will spring to even greater prominence once we have uh, an American champion again. Well, I think, a, you know, a great championship is going to be built on a lot more than one person, so I, 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 I can't see that coming, um, you know, to fruition, but um, you know, I, I, there's definitely a sense of pride in being American, especially joining a team like Penske. I think it's a, you know, it's it's one of the most successful teams in the world, and you know, a team you dream about being a part of. Um, it really is, you know, it's kind of the American dream, the, the team itself. So, uh, to be a, a young American guy, you know, to, to get an opportunity to drive with this type of group, it's, uh, you know, it's everything you could ask for. It's everything you can dream of. And I, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure that's going to resonate well with some people. You know, I don't know how much that moves the needle or not. I'm not the right guy to ask that. Um, but I think, yeah, I think for, for sure, you know, there's things that are going to help move the needle in IndyCar racing. And I think you've already seen a lot of them. You know, I think we, we're on a good trajectory right now. And there's a lot of excitement within the sport and what we're doing with IndyCar racing. And, you know, I, I hope to add to that, you know, it, Winning races is all I care about. It's uh, you know, it's my focus um, for the for the team and, and and trying to help them win championships in Indy 500s. And you know, I think if there's people that are interested in an American doing that in Team Penske, then maybe it'll help the cause. But I, I don't know if that's the whole equation. Okay. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Thanks. Once again, if you do have a question or comment, please press star one on your telephone keypad at this time. And there appear to be no further questions. Oh, I'm sorry, one just came in. And our next question is from Philip Wilson from IndyCar. Oh, actually, Phil, can you hit star one again, please, if you'd like to ask your question? Okay. Please state your question, Phil. Thank you. Hi, Tim uh, and Joseph. Congratulations, guys. Um, Tim, uh, I know it's probably premature, but could you uh, give a status update on Elio Castroneves? That's a broad question. <laughs> he's down there trying to fight the hurricane today, but uh, no. He, <laughs> I, I, if you're asking about our, our driver lineup for for next year, this is the only change. So um, yeah, 
he's he's a guy that uh, you know as I said before he's he's been a big part of our team. He's you know when you look at um, the definition of of kind of teamwork and and you know leading by example on and off the track, he's he's certainly done that. You know he's a guy that um, you know like anybody else, his career is not forever either. He'll be the first one to tell you that. So. Um, he's a big part of where we've been, and you know, he and I started with this team at the same time. So, uh, you know, certainly, certainly a lot of loyalty there, and on both fronts. Thank you for that, Joseph. Um, I'm curious. You know, everybody gets into racing, and they know who Roger Penske is, and they know, well, they know that that name is synonymous, synonymous with success. Did you ever dream of driving for Roger? Did you ever envision this or think about this, or that, that ever in your mind? Well, you know, I think for me, I, I watched everything when I grew up. You know, I, I I saw NASCAR, Formula One, sports car racing, Indy car racing, uh, you know, numerous Indy 500s on TV. Never really got to the race uh, to see it in person until later on in life. Um, but you know, you, you always you always do <laughs> you always do the Marlboro cars were back in the day, and they had those iconic liveries, and uh, you know, they were always well kept, and they they always were distinctive within the field, and you know, that if I if I was going to give you a, you know the best answer that's that's what stands out to me when I was younger and I always thought those are the coolest cars out there I'd want to want to drive one of those and um, you know the the I got into racing actually relatively late I didn't start racing uh, truly until I was thirteen and so I, I, you know it doesn't date back to me being four or five that I had this dream to you know to drive for this team or that team I think the more and more I got immersed into racing and really started to learn about it and trying to get my hands around everything and, and understand where I wanted to be. I think the more respect and the more history that I learned about Penske racing and how, how, how amazing it would be to be able to drive for an organization like this. You know, it's, it's a, it's a huge honor to get this type of opportunity um, and to be a small, small piece of it. So um, I guess to answer your question, yes, um, it's just probably in a different way for me. You know, I think my career was a little different in the way it progressed up, but it's, it's an honor. I mean, it's, it's just, I think this place is the American dream, and um, it's it's the it's one of the best teams in the world. So it's it's crazy to be a part of it now. Thank you both. Congrats. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. We have another question from Michael Brudenell from Detroit Free Press. Please state your question. Yeah, just a quickie, Joseph. Um, did, uh, did Roger actually get on the phone? Because he, he likes to get on the phone and talk to drivers. Did he uh, actually call you and offer you the job, and uh, and what was your quick response? You know, I don't think I uh, I don't think I talked to Roger on the on the phone until like 24 hours ago. That was the first time I ever heard, you know had a conversation with Roger really, um, which is uh, which was great. You know, it's uh, really this this team has has been so easy to to you know get get immersed with within such a short period of time. I mean, I've had a lot of help from from Tim in a short amount of time and, and Roger to try and sort through something and see if it would work, and it was a very easy decision um, to make when it came up. You know, it was a quick process, but it was very easy to, to see this is the direction I wanted to go. And So, yeah, to answer your question, I think I've had I've had the help from, from a lot of people. Uh, you know, Tim and Roger have, have just been great to me, and, um, you know, I, I don't know much about them to be honest with you. I'm I'm still learning. I would talk about just being here today, trying to take everything in. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm trying to tread water right now as a young guy. I don't know much about it, and I'm trying to learn about everyone. But they've been nothing but gold to me so far. I, I can't I can't tell you how easy it is to get to know these people and, and how how well they take care of you. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. And our next question comes from Steve Wittick from Trackside Online. Please state your question. Hi, gentlemen. Congratulations. Uh, Tim, this one's for you first. Uh, will Brian and Myron and uh, the rest of the crew pretty much stay the same on the number two? I don't think our offices will be any different than in the past. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll sit down and consider all that stuff in the off season. We'll have plenty of time after this testing. So, um, you know, certainly a believer in continuity to whatever extent makes sense. But uh, we'll, we'll evaluate things in the off season like we always do. So I guess nothing's etched in stone. But uh, there haven't been any decisions made to make any changes, so I don't know if that really answers your question. But the first thing we need to get in place is who's going to drive the car, and then yes. we'll go to these next couple tests. And and uh, really, after after next week, we don't run for really probably until the next you know, next year. So we 
we've got a lot of time to think about it and, and try and understand what's the best way forward. Okay, thanks. And Joseph, uh, I know loyalty is a big part of, of who you are, and you've been with Ed and Sarah and that group for a long time. Was there anybody, drivers, anybody else within the sport that you sought for counsel to help you make this decision? Well, I think you're always assessing things. You know, you're always talking to, you know, people that you're close to. Um, and, and for me, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a matter of, you know, this team, that team. I think for me it came down to, you know, do you ever want to do something different um, than what you're doing currently? And, and if you do, is that the right or wrong decision? Uh, I think it would have been very easy for me to continue with ECR and, and have a lot of success, success and be very comfortable and, um, you know, just have a great team behind me. But, you know, I, for me it came down to trying to make a decision if I wanted to try something different. Um, you know, and and specifically doing that young, uh, while I was young, still in my career. And I, I, if you're if you're given that opportunity, do you want to take it? And so that that for me was was the hardest part. And there's there's a couple people that were close to me that I tried to you know bounce things off of and figure out if that was the right thing to do. And um, you know, I want to get into who they were, but but yeah, you always have people that are close to you that that try and help you sort through things mentally. All right, congratulations, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, that's star one if you do have a question or comment. And there appear to be no further questions at this time. Jeremy, I'll turn the floor back over to you. All right, great. Thanks, everybody, for calling in. Uh, we will have the transcript of this conference uh, available later this afternoon. Uh, once again, we look forward to seeing all of you either at the track the remainder of this year or when we begin again in 2017. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude today's teleconference. We thank you for your participation. You may disconnect your lines at this time and have a great day.